In our imaginations, we might dream of a satellite internet system that delivers lightning-fast broadband speeds from space, freeing us from the dreary earthbound experience of cable monopolies and wireless data caps. We might envision an ISP that smashes through the plotting local politics of digging fiber trenches by literally achieving escape velocity and delivering fast, reliable internet from the heavens above. A system that will work on moving trucks, RVs, and even boats. Space-based internet access will change everything because there is nothing technology cannot achieve in our minds. Starlink, a new satellite internet service from SpaceX, is a spectacular technical achievement that might one day do all of these things. But right now, it is also very much a beta product that is unreliable, inconsistent, and foiled by even the merest suggestion of trees. What is Starlink? Starlink is a new satellite-based internet service from SpaceX. In beta, it promises up to 100 megabits per second download and 20 megabits per second upload speeds. Starlink currently has very limited availability. Starlink promises to provide access from a constellation of thousands of tiny satellites blanketing the Earth, using a cutting-edge phased array antenna and the dish to quickly track the satellites moving across the sky. When it is fully deployed, Starlink claims it will operate the world's largest satellite constellation managed by a new automated orbital guidance system and an automated collision avoidance system, which has already been involved in a controversial close call. Using advanced satellites in a low orbit, Starlink enables video calls, online gaming, streaming, and other high data rate activities that historically have not been possible with satellite internet. Users can expect to see download speeds between 100 megabits per second and 200 megabits per second, and latency as low as 20 ms in most locations. Starlink is ideally suited for areas where connectivity has been unreliable or completely unavailable. People across the globe are using Starlink to gain access to education, health services, and even communication support during natural disasters. The Starlink coverage map divides the globe into a honeycomb-like hexagonal grid. The satellites launched so far mostly provide service in the northern part of North America. The whole thing is still in beta, so access is limited. The dish is small and light enough that you can easily move it to different locations, but you're not guaranteed service anywhere but the address where you signed up. Inside the large gray Starlink box, you'll find four items. The dish itself, which is connected to a 100-foot power over Ethernet PoE cable, a short black metal tripod stand for the dish, the main black Starlink power adapter, and a small silver Wi-Fi router with its own white PoE cable. The fundamental setup is incredibly simple. You plug both Ethernet cables into the power adapter, plug that into the wall, and you're done. The printed instructions in the box are just pictograms, like IKEA for space internet. All of the hardware is nicely designed even though it's in beta. It feels close to a consumer product already, with a sense of style that goes well beyond the hospital equipment vibes of most satellite gear. The dish itself, officially named Dishy McFlatface, is made of white plastic, with a matte white texture on its face. Two buttons on the mounting pole click into the included tripod mount, and that's that. Some motors rotate and tilt the dish to align it automatically, which means no fiddling is required. Starlink will double in speed later this year, according to a tweet by Elon Musk, posted as a reply to someone who had just received their Starlink beta kit via CNET. The company currently promises speeds between 50 and 150 megabytes per second, and Musk specifically calls out that 300 megabits per second goal in his tweet. While 300 megabits per second isn't an unheard of speed, it's faster than many people currently have access to, especially in the low to medium population density areas that Musk talks about targeting in a second tweet. In the reply, Elon also tells the person that their latency should improve to around 20 ms as well. In the speed test screenshots, their latency was at 34 and 44 ms respectively, while Starlink's website says to expect between 20 and 40 ms during the beta. The speed increase in latency improvements should come as a nice surprise to anyone who put down a $100 Starlink pre-order. However, it's well known that Elon's promises about the future should be taken with a grain of salt, especially if they're about timelines. Still, this shows that SpaceX is looking to speed up Starlink, and it might be able to keep pace with what's available from a copper wire running to your house. SpaceX's Starlink satellite internet is fast approaching the speed of regular broadband, a test has found. Elon Musk's space-based network, 
which beams the internet down from 1,650 satellites in orbit, recorded an average download speed of 97.23 megabits per second Mbps in the second quarter of 2021, according to a report from a speed test. Starlink wasn't too far off the average download speed for U.S. fixed broadband providers. They averaged 115.22 megabits per second during the second quarter, speed test said in its report. Fixed broadband providers, including AT&T Internet and Comcast, deliver internet through a phone line or fiber optic cables. Starlink's average download speed in the first quarter of 2021 was 65.72 megabits per second, speed test said. With the 100 megabits per second download speed, users can download a film in under a minute, according to the U-Switch speed calculator. According to the speed test report, fixed broadband recorded a median latency of 14 milliseconds in the second quarter. Starlink was the only satellite service to come close to this with a latency of 45 ms, according to the report. Latency is a measure of the time it takes to send data and receive a response, and the shorter the time, the better. Starlink has lower latency speeds than HughesNet and Viasat, competitors cited in the speed test report because its satellites are closer to Earth. The speed test report showed that HughesNet and Viasat provided average download speeds of 19.73 megabits per second and 18.13 megabits per second, respectively, in the second quarter. In October, Starlink told its users that they should expect download speeds between 50 and 150 megabits per second and latency from 20 ms to 40 ms as the company enhanced its systems. However, some users have seen speeds of more than 210 megabits per second. Starlink provides high-speed, low-latency broadband internet across the globe. Within each coverage area, orders are fulfilled on a first-come, first-served basis. Starlink expects to be able to provide continuous global coverage by around September, but will then need to seek regulatory approvals, its President Gwyn Shotwell said. We've successfully deployed 1,800 or so satellites, and once all those satellites reach their operational orbit, we will have continuous global coverage, so that should be like September timeframe," she told the Macquarie Group Technology Conference via webcast. Starlink, which has said it plans to deploy 12,000 satellites in total at a cost of roughly $10 billion, currently offers beta services in 11 countries, Shotwell said. SpaceX has received more than 500,000 pre-orders for its Starlink satellite internet service and anticipates no technical problems meeting the demand, says the founder Elon Musk. Only limitation is the high density of users in urban areas, Musk tweeted, responding to a post from a CNBC reporter that said that $99 deposits SpaceX took for the service were fully refundable and did not guarantee service. Musk further stated that it will be more of a challenge when we get into the several million user ranges. Although the Starlink kit ships with a short tripod and the sparse online instructions refer to it being knee-high, the dish needs to be mounted as high up as you can get it. Starlink requires a near-perfect line of sight to its satellites, which are often fairly low in the sky. Trees, buildings, and even poles will easily obstruct the signal. So if you've got tall trees blocking the horizon, there's no choice but to get up and over them. Starlink's website makes all of this crystal clear. If any object, such as a tree, chimney, pole, etc. interrupts the path of the beam. Even briefly, your internet service will be interrupted, says Starlink. The best guidance we can give is to install your Starlink at the highest elevation possible where it is safe to do so, with the clear view of the sky. Users who live in areas with lots of tall trees, buildings, etc. may not be good candidates for early use of Starlink. Well guys, how well do you think Starlink is doing? Let us know what you think about SpaceX's Starlink by leaving a comment in the section below. Thanks.